Hey guys, Gary J here, and today we're looking at a wonderful revolver here, one of my favorite types of revolver designs. I really love uh, this particular design of revolver. Smith & Wesson uh, made this, uh, and they made them between uh, 1887 and 1940, 1887 to 1940, just before World War II. And uh, there are several unique things about uh, this particular revolver. And on the top right here, I don't know how in the world they did that, but they, they uh, put up here uh, the writing. The font is so small right there, only like a millimeter looks like. But it's got two lines right here, and it's got a little bit of writing right here. And I'll, I'll tell you what it says on top right there. The stamping there on the top of the barrel says uh, Smith & Wesson, Springfield, Massachusetts, USA. The bottom line says patented October the 8th, 1887, I mean 1883, and August 4th, 1885, and April 9th, 1889. Now I had to use... Uh, a microscope to read that. I have a couple of handheld type microscopes just to read that. Uh, and then on the barrel right here, it says 38 cartridge, uh, Smith and Wesson. And uh, that's pretty much all the writing there. Now it has a serial number on the bottom here. I had to kind of polish that out. And I've had this revolver for a long time, but the serial number is 20059. So this particular model, I like it a lot because uh, it reminds me of the Schofield 45, which is a break back action. And this is a, it's got a catch right here. Uh, it hinges right here. And uh, with this catch right here, it's got the latch and the hinge. And uh, it's a self ejecting type mechanism uh, for your spent uh, shells, your brass. That's another great thing, which reminds me a little bit of the Schofield 45. While I mentioned Schofield 45, I can't help but mention also, if uh, you look at the Schofield 45, beautiful pistol. Those things are really expensive. But the movie called Dead Man's Gun, Dead Dead Man's Gun. If you've never seen that, look on YouTube, Dead Man's Gun, and watch just one of those programs. And that was back in the 90s, uh, I guess. Henry Winkler was the producer of that, who played on Happy Days. And it's all about this this uh, cursed Schofield 45 that's beautifully crafted. Great stories there. I, I just really love that program. That's where a lot of people learn a lot about the Schofield 45 revolver so a lot of times people call revolvers pistols and sometimes I do that but really uh, anything like this is a revolver it's not really considered a pistol so here in Georgia you know it's kind of backwards too so you may hear me call it a, a pistol but it's a revolver so what else can we say about this particular revolver well, one thing about these type of revolvers where the latch is here and you, you open it up, kind of like a shotgun, the top brake revolvers were designed for fast reloading. You could be riding a horse like with a Schofield 45, shoot your rounds and flip the shells out of it and, and, and reload it while you're riding a horse. That was a great attraction to the Schofield 45 with the brake back action like this right here. And we'll look at that. And this design, being hammerless, was a concealed carry type revolver. Because if you've ever put a revolver in your pocket and tried to pull it out quick, the hammer's going to catch on the material in your pocket, or the front sight's going to catch on the material in your pocket, because usually they have like a square sight sometimes. And you can't get it out of your pocket quick enough. Well, with this design, the front side is a half moon shape, so it cannot catch your clothing. And you don't have a hammer spur here to catch your clothing either. 
I have seen some people take Smith & Wesson newer models, like in the 80s and so forth, and they would take their Smith & Wesson and they would uh, take, you know, take the hammer out of it and cut the hammer uh, flush right here. So they just cut off the, the hammer. It didn't make any difference on shooting. Uh, you just had to use double action. You had to pull the trigger. You didn't have a, a hammer to pull back on anymore on the revolver. I've seen people do that, and that works great if you want something like that. But this was uh, one of the unique qualities of this particular type of pistol, that it was quick to reload. It was uh, a great personal protection pistol, uh, revolver, and uh, I mean, you could pull it out real quick and, and shoot from your pocket and all. Now, these were also known as the New Departure uh, by Smith & Wesson. And uh, they made some changes, and, and later after 1940, they come up with a stronger uh, ejection system here that we'll look at. And so that's kind of why these kind of went out of popularity. But if Smith & Wesson made these today, uh, you know, or somebody makes these today, they probably do. It's a great revolver to have. So there's a lot of things that could be said about that uh, a lot of times these come in a two and a half to three and a half inch barrel. This one's got a four inch barrel on this 38. I don't think you see the 38s quite as much. And uh, so the uh, 32 uh, cartridge revolver like this, that one weighed about 17 ounces and about six and a half inches uh, long across here, where the 38 is uh, about eight inches across and weighs probably about 20 ounces. So great uh, uh, revolvers here. So let me show you how this works right here. And this is the other side of it too. Now generally uh, when you see one of these right here, they usually have black grips. They have SW here for Smith & Wesson. Uh, those grips have been replaced with these right here, which I like these grips a lot better than the dark black ones, they just got a pretty color to these right here. And so you've got a catch right here and you grab it right here and you pull up on it. And you see this toggle, we'll look at it right here. You see that toggle right there? That's your catch and it hangs right here. So that uh, when you push that down, it's gonna catch and it's not gonna flip up on you. So. You pull this up right here. The Schofields are that way. Some of the Schofields are that way too, I think. And this right here is your uh, casing for your uh, cartridges that you shot. This right here comes up. You see how that comes up? That uh, breaks them loose from the cylinder here. And what you're going to do is just turn it upside down when you open it up and gravity will take over. Some of these, uh, this one was replaced with a model that had a lot stiffer um, plunger here that would flip the shells out. I mean, it would flip them out really well. This right here just kind of breaks them loose and you let gravity uh, knock them out. So that's the way it looks right there when you open it up. And when you when you get past this point right here, it the plunger right here, our ejector goes back down. So you put your cartridges in here real quick and then you throw it like that and you're ready to shoot again. That's the advantage of this right here. And again, no hammer. Uh, this half moon right here. Uh, you put it in your pocket. You can pull it out uh, just as smooth. And uh, you don't have to worry about it hanging up. And right here, when you get ready to shoot, you just grab it and squeeze not like normal. And you got pressure right here. And that releases the trigger too. Otherwise, if you can't pull the trigger. Let's check our trigger pull on this revolver right here, okay? And we'll set it up here. And we've got uh, about 12 and, a, 12 and a half pounds on the uh, trigger pull. So that's not really bad, and that's another good safety measure right there, too, for it to be like 12 pounds. Because, I mean, when you're pulling it, it's just, it feels right. You don't want it too 
uh, you know, two under extreme there. So, uh, it's just a great revolver on these. Now, one of the things too, um, when you find these, I used to could find these for like a hundred dollars, hundred ten, hundred thirty, forty dollars. Uh, if you look these up, uh, back in the 1988, 1988, I have gun value books. I have all kind of books on guns, but the gun value books back in 1988 valued these around 350. They're probably, you know, a lot more than that now. And it depends on how well it shoots and all that and the quality of them. So if you're looking for something like that, it shoots a 38 short. You don't see many people shooting 38 shorts. So this model used black powder. There's que it is questionable whether it's a safe idea to shoot a modern day 38 short in one of these because that smokeless powder it's got a lot more pressure when you shoot a smokeless powder round than a old black powder. So could a modern day 38 short blow this uh, gun up? Um, you know, that's, that's questionable. The hinges here are really good to me. Now, when you, if you decide to buy something like this right here, I wanna show you some of the problems that these revolvers have that you need to be looking for. Now, I looked in the barrel of this right here. The grooves are pretty good in this barrel. I have seen people who shot these type of revolvers at seven yards, and they could put sometimes one bullet in the same hole. So, but generally, you're gonna be shooting at seven yards, probably within like a two inch group, okay? But that's in, with somebody who knows how to shoot. So the things that you gotta worry about with these right here about shooting, this latch doesn't latch, you know, tight. The cylinder wobbles in it. Uh, when you pull the trigger, the cylinder doesn't line up perfectly with the barrel. And um, that's pretty much your biggest problems with these type of revolvers. So you have to be extremely careful if you ever want to shoot one of these that you don't have issue with this, the cylinder or the hammer spring, it's got kind of a little leaf spring in here. And um, that's probably about it. And, uh, but this looks like it would shoot really well looking at the grooves and the, and the lands in the uh, barrel here. They look really, really good for the age. So this revolver is, uh, Somewhere between 100 years old to 120 years old, somewhere in that ballpark. But it's a really neat uh, revolver. And uh, they can be quite expensive today. Harrison Richardson made one, looks just like this. Other companies made uh, this uh, revolver that look pretty much just like this, or they, or they made the ones with the the uh, hammer on them. And so you'll see a lot of different companies who've made similar versions of the Smith & Wesson here, or Smith & Wesson made similar versions of some of these other people, I don't know. So, great little revolver though, uh, back in its day. And uh, I wish they made them today like that. And uh, the way you could shoot a, a 38 uh, Special or 357 Magnum. I, well, you don't want them too big, but, you, you know, 38 would probably be about the right size for concealing and carry in today's time. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. Gary J.